No, I'm not Leonardo DiCaprio and this is not the Titanic, but I am here on the memorial for the HMAS Brisbane and I'm about to speak to one of the former commanding officers of the Brisbane itself. To take this journey through our favourite dive locations history, I spoke with the ship's former commanding officer, Jeff Morton. Jeff, so we know that the, um, that the HMAS Brisbane served in both the Gulf and Vietnam War. Can you elaborate a little bit more on, on its particular role uh, with, the, uh, with the Navy there? The role in Vietnam was gunfire support off the coast. The Army would uh, need uh, weapon support, fire support, and uh, Brisbane would sit offshore and the Army would call in fire and the five inch guns would provide that fire. It's like seaborne artillery if you like and it's very effective yeah. and very accurate too. So uh, that was a role largely in Vietnam. Uh, in the Gulf War it was air defence, it was patrolling, it was anti-interdiction and uh, there's a myriad of things you can do and uh, Brisbane was particularly good at air defence because it had a, a long range service to air missile system uh, called the standard missile system and a really up to date combat system, a digital combat system which would allow them to interface with all the battle forces up there in the Gulf. So, uh, and she's also a good command ship, so we had the ability to command and control other ships on board. So Jeff, I understand you've got um, a few interesting facts about the uh, Brisbane as far as its nickname. Oh, Apparently it had a theme song or something? Yeah, the Steel Cat was cool because it was so powerful. Yeah. And the theme song was Proud Mary. It came out of America. Yeah. It was built in America. And I guess that's where they picked it up. And every time we'd come and do a replenishment, uh, we'd put the Proud Mary song on our upper deck speakers yeah. uh, to blow the other ships away. Are you able to tell us a little bit about the dimensions of the ship and also what it was like to live on board this Navy vessel? The ship was uh, 4,800 tonnes, uh, 133 metres long. I didn't work in metres in those days. And uh, she, she was capable of 36 knots with four boilers. She was uh, steam powered uh, with four boilers and two shafts and 70,000 horse, shaft horsepower per engine. So she was really powerful, yeah, very powerful, went fast, and I had a lot of fun going fast in her. Do you know it's top speed? Yeah, 36 knots. 36 knots. Uh, and that's pretty fast. You can water ski behind yeah. if you want to. Did you have a ski behind it? Well, not me, no. That looked like too dangerous a thing for me to do. <laughs> but uh, it was also fairly cramped living conditions. If you, when you dive on it, you'll see the mess decks there and see how cramped it was to put a, a lot of sailors together in three-tier bunks, and uh, it was close living quarters. But it was fun. She was a pretty comfortable ship to live in at sea. They rode well at sea and um, most people enjoyed the sea experience on board for it was largely fairly comfortable. Since being sunk in 2005, three nautical miles off the coast of Mooloolaba, the ex-HMAS Brisbane has been explored by thousands of divers and is now a marine sanctuary to more than 200 species of sea life. You know, there's been a lot of controversy. Not everybody wanted to sunk here, but I wanted her sunk here because I thought it was a good thing to do. And I feel pretty good about her being here, earning money for the Sunshine Coast and still contributing um, as she did when she was a commissioned warship. She contributed to the nation's security. Now she's providing economic contribution. So that's a little bit about the wreck. If you're a scuba diver and you want to dive a part of Australian history, get down to Mooloolaba.